Thank you for coming today. I'm Maria Lovelin Schneider. I am the chairman of the Physical City Committee, and we have a number of our committee members here with us today. And we are presenting our innovative idea for helping rebuild communities in Southern Dallas internally with a platform that everyone can participate in that is based on supporting commerce. So I know many of you here are very familiar with Dallas, and we know that uh, Dallas is a city divided. And mostly it's divided between north and south. If you look at the picture here, the red represents lower income communities. And they're not just lower income, but if you actually drive around, like I do all the time, in some of these communities, you're going to be startled to see that there are large tracts of vacant land. And th these are in areas where you can see downtown right there. It's very close in. Uh, beautiful areas. There are hills. You're close to lakes, rivers, etc. But they're fairly vacant. The population is declining. The housing in the neighborhoods are declining. And there are no businesses. And once there are no businesses in the neighborhood, there's no means for that community to actually rebuild itself because there's no, there's no means of prosperity. You need business owners. You need commerce. You need jobs. All of those things come with businesses. And as we saw earlier, with the gentleman that spoke earlier, he seems like a very intelligent young man, the kind of guy that we would invest in, that we would be impressed with. And the reality is that there are beautiful, intelligent, articulate, educated people all over Southern Dallas who, but for the funding and but for the resources, would be starting those businesses that are missing in those communities and would be rebuilding their communities internally. Typically what's missing is the resources. It is very difficult to get funding to start those kinds of endeavors. So what we have developed through lots of looking around at what's available and really more, we, we were more concerned about what works rather than being innovative. But what we've come up with is a collaborative funding platform that is specifically designed to partner with entrepreneurs in the communities and help them build businesses. And through that, help bring jobs and prosperity back into those communities. So we looked around a lot. This needs to be a very collaborative platform. It needs to be something that people in the community can invest in at, say, $100 a share and get something back out of in the long term and participate in rebuilding. And it needs to be something that people who are concerned about the inequity in our city, for those people to be able to participate and create a collective identity that we are Dallas. It's not North Dallas and South Dallas. It's not black and white. We're Dallas, and it's a wonderful city. So we wanted to provide that kind of platform. What we, what we found was a real estate investment trust. And for those of you not familiar with it, it's a real estate funding platform, but it's specifically designed for a very broad number of investors. In fact, you have to have 100 to even begin. So we wanted to look at that type of a platform and get that started. Our value proposition with regard to this is really threefold. These are the basic pillars of sustainability. Social equity, we're working with people in the communities hand in hand, not to tell them or impose on that community what should be there, but to help build the things that they are able to build if they have partnership and resources. Economic prosperity. I feel very confident that this, from an investment point of view, the ROI is definitely there. For those of you who are not aware, the southern half of Dallas carries 15% of the tax base. The northern half is 85%. What that means is there's a huge value gap that we can take advantage of to help provide, not only rebuild those communities, take advantage of that value gap for our investors and the return that will go both back into the community and also those who are part of this collaborative platform. And then I've been in green construction and real estate development for 20 years, and we won't be doing anything that is not sustainable, which actually, interestingly enough, for those who work in sustainability, is much more important to the communities in southern Dallas than it typically is to the more affluent communities, which is something that I, I love. So our model is a little bit different from a traditional funding model, which based on their risk tolerance is all about their ROI and getting their money back. That, that is part of our platform, but we're going to start off really working in the community, and we're already doing this, and I have been for a number of years, to figure out what needs to be there. This is not a random business that needs to start. There are certain areas that need a restaurant or they need a grocery store. Then we work with the right person in the community who's already able to do that. We recently had a community engagement seminar, and I had a wonderful gentleman come up to me and said, you know, we've had three generations of people in my family running grocery stores, and I want to start a grocery store. Perfect. Guess what? His community doesn't have a grocery store. So the idea then is to, to find the right project, the right person, 
and then wrap the right resources around it because it's not all about money. We all know that small businesses tend to fail, but there are wonderful organizations like Social Venture Partners that have mentoring. Uh, there are a number of them actually. So it's part of the key thing to make this succeed is to wrap the right businesses around this community, around the people. And then of course we expect to pay dividends to our investors. This is a very collaborative effort. We're already working in the communities on both a for-profit and a non-profit basis. And this platform, by the way, is a for-profit social enterprise. We're already working with UT Arlington, their students and their classes, to do master planning and strategy planning in our first pilot community, which is Cadillac Heights. And we expect the philanthropic community to jump in on the side of, of two things, helping us get this started, which is what we're looking at today, the fees associated with making sure that we do everything correctly for the platforms and the accounting. And then also in the long term, if we have donations, they can be made on behalf of people in the community who can then actually reap the benefits and the dividends in the long term. This is our pilot project in the Cadillac Heights Arts and Trades District, which was mentioned earlier. I'm Maria Schneider. I've had 20 years of experience in construction and real estate, and I've actually been running a small family fund buying properties in southern Dallas for the last four years. My partner, Dr. Doric Earl, is unfortunately not here today. He has a PhD in policy, public policy and planning and has been working. He's now consulting with a large number of nonprofits working all across the southern sector. So we already have deep intimacy with a lot of the communities that we want to be working with. So I really appreciate your time. I, I look forward to your questions. And if anybody is excited about this as I am, please come and talk to me afterwards. You said you expect this to be a for-profit in, endeavor and return um, to your investors. What kind of return are you expecting to provide? It depends. Well, I'm thinking it's probably going to wind up being somewhere around 6%. Maria, can you talk a little bit more about how you'd find the operators or entrepreneurs that, that you would need in these types of properties? Sure. What I found is when I actually hang out in southern Dallas, which I do, I just meet them. I mean, it's, it's surprising. I think I showed a picture of a lot of people standing around. That was one of our community engagement seminars. We've had two of them now that we had a few weeks ago. So typically, you know, we're in there. We're talking to people. And I'll, like I said, a gentleman would come up to me and talk about his family. And, and someone else says, you know, I have an entire commercial kitchen worth of equipment sitting in storage right now because I've always wanted to start a restaurant and we got priced out of Bishop Arts or whatever. I mean, the, you, the richness of the community is quite surprising and the things that are already there, but for this, this last, you know, 20% of getting into a project. Maria, tell me how uh, your uh, concept is different from a lot of the other small business lenders, for example, Lyft Fund or People Fund or BCL of Texas. I'm not actually familiar with all of those. I know that there are some that are essentially grants to try to help get things going. And this really is an investment platform, for one thing. It, it's, a, it's something that provides dividends to the investors in the long term. But I think the biggest dif differentiator, we're not opening ourselves up and saying, OK, uh, we've got money. Come pitch us a, a project or come, you know, come to us. I mean, we really are. This is a, a continuum of the work we're already doing. We're in the community. We recognize a need for this type of business. We see the opportunity. There's a specific person with those needs. It's a much, um, I don't know, more focused kind of thing. And it really relies on our intimacy with that community and really understanding it makes sense to put that business there with that person and it can be successful with these resources. So I think maybe a little broader spectrum relationship than maybe the, the average funding. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks.